Yeah, I know you want to watch the video because of this little thingy, my 3D printed spray gun, but let me tell you a little story. Nine months ago in January 2023, I had absolutely no clue about 3D printing. I had no clue how to create data for 3D models and I had no clue about 3D printers. And now I'm here at this point, I created the spray gun, I 3D printed the spray gun and I'm able to use it. So that video is not for pros, it's made for beginners. If you think it's time for you to start 3D printing, I like to give you an idea how to start and how to achieve a goal in half an year like this. So let's start with the video and what you need of course is a 3D printer. GD gave me the chance to test the XMAX 3 for one week and I did five projects from absolutely beginner, a simple wall mount to the spray gun I have here. So if you are interested how to start 3D printing, let's find out and I give you some tips, some hints and I like to talk about the GD X Max 3 of course because that's the printer I used for my projects. Yeah, the X Max Pro comes with a lot of cool features like input shaper, clipper firmware and auto bed leveling, a huge build plate but maybe you have no clue what that means and you are a bit lost. So I like to give you some idea of what these things mean but at first we have to unpack it of course because there are two very important things if you buy a 3D printer. The first one is it must be easy to use and it must be reliable. And the firmware of the XMAX 3 comes with six language options and a cool animation which shows exactly the unpacking and setup of the printer. That's perfect for beginners so you are safe from any failure and it's a bulletproof way to unpack and to set up the printer. Just follow all the steps shown in the animation. Yeah, unpacking was super easy thanks to the animation. Now we have to do three setup steps. We have to level the print bed, we have to set the C offset and we can do a resonance test, the input shaper test. It sounds difficult, but it isn't. And what's very important for 3D printing is an absolutely leveled print bed. It has to be the same distance on every point of the print bed compared to the nozzle to the hot end. And thankfully the XMAX 3 comes with all the bed leveling. So the only thing you have to do is you have to press a button and printer does all the things for you. That's very good. So if you like to buy a 3D printer, make sure it has all the bed leveling like the XMAX 3. And next we have to set the C offset. That's the distance between the hot end and the print bed. And to do that I have this little card and I can set the C offset with the card. And that's also very easy. You have instructions on the card. And at last we have to do the input shaping. These printers can print at high speeds and there can be resonances in the belts, in the stabber motors. And to eliminate these resonances you can do an input shaping. And now listen carefully. It wobbles a little bit, the hot end wobbles a little bit and it saves the file. And this file eliminates all these resonances and that's exactly what the input shaping does. That was super easy, you have to invest maybe 10 to 20 minutes and you are ready to print. And the XMAX 3 comes also with a huge toolkit and in the toolkit are two hot ends which is perfect. One hot end for normal materials like PETG or PLA and another hot end for abrasive and hot to print materials like ABS, ASA or maybe nylon. And that's exactly what I like because I like to print super rigid parts and to produce these parts you need a hot end which can print up to 300 degrees Celsius and you need also a heated chamber like on the XMAX 3. You can heat the print chamber up to 65 degrees Celsius and that avoids any warping in the parts and if you want to do it as well make sure you buy a printer which has a heated chamber and also a hot end which can handle up to 300 degrees celsius. And that's a typical situation when it comes to 3D printing. I made myself a cyclone dust extraction for my vacuum but guess what's missing? Yeah I have no adapters, no fittings for the hoses and maybe you have a table saw or any other power tools which needs dust extraction and then you need these adapters. I printed also a huge adapter for my paint boost, check this out and that's what we are doing, printing the adapters for the cyclone. And now it gets a bit tricky if you have no experience in using 3D software but I like to show you my way, a way you can handle if you are a beginner 
And the software I recommend is Fusion 360 and there are three reasons why I recommend Fusion 360. The first one is it's a professional CAD software used by professionals of course. The second one is you can find hundreds of tutorials on YouTube if you have no experience in using the software and it takes 10 minutes and you can do the adapter I swear. And the third one is it's free for private use, so you don't have to do any investment. Just play around in the software, toggle around, find out if it's something for you. And if you are successful, you can use it for your private projects. And I'll link you the Fusion page underneath in the video description. So you can find it, you can try it out. And now check out how I made the adapter. I started with a sketch in Fusion and drew two circles shown in blue. Then I did an offset plane shown in orange. I put another sketch on the offset plane to draw another circle. Then I used the loft tool to combine these circles. They have different diameters. So what I get is a tapered shape shown in gray. And now I have to do it over and over again, creating an offset plane, putting a sketch on top, drawing a circle, combining these circles with the loft tool until I have the shape of the adapter. Super simple. Here you can see another offset plane. I draw a circle, combine it with the loft tool. And the last step I have to do is I have to use the shell tool to hollow the adapter. But don't panic if you don't understand all these steps. There are a lot of tutorials online which show in detail how to create the adapter. And yeah, it's super simple. So don't hesitate to try it yourself. Next step is to print the adapter. Yeah, it would be super cool if it's as easy as pushing a button and the printer prints the parts you need for your projects. But there's one step missing. Most 3D printers and these FDM printers in general, these filament printers print in layers. And what we have to do is we have to tell the printer how to print this 3D object. We have to slice it. But what does slicing mean? These printers print in layers, one layer on top of another, and now we have to tell the printer how to print the object. We have to slice it in different layers, and that's what the slicing software does. And most of these modern printers have their own slicing software, but you can use also Cura or the Prusa slicer if you want. And I use them all, there's no major difference between these slicers. So. The GD comes with the GD slicer and it's based on the Prusa slicer and that's what we are using. So let's check the slicer and how it works. We are already on the Fusion 360 page with another project. These are wall mounts from our speakers. And what you have to do first is you have to export a file when you created your 3D objects. So click on file, click on export, and now you have to export an SDL file. So search for SDL. And now you can save the file on your hard drive. Just click export. I already exported this file. So I'm changing to the GD slicer. Here we are in GD and that's the print pad of your printer. And now you have to import the file again. So click on file in the upper left corner. Click on import, import SDL. And now you can search for the SDL on your hard drive. And here are the wall mounts. And now it gets a bit tricky because you can change hundreds of things in the GD slicer and in most of these slicers. But don't panic, the GD slicer has three different modes. It has a simple mode for beginners, an advanced mode and an expert mode if you are an expert in 3D printing. And if you are new, just start with the simple mode and I show you the things you have to change, the most important things for 3D printing. And the first thing is the filament. You can find it also in the upper right corner. Just open the drop down and here are filaments installed. These are the presets I did. So I'm starting with ASA. And if you want to do your own preset for your filament, just check the upper left corner. Click on filament settings and here you can do the settings for your filament. And the most important ones are the temperature, the nozzle temperature and the bed temperature. I set the bed temperature to 110 degrees for the first layer or also for all other layers and the nozzle temperature to 275 degrees for the first layer and 265 degrees for all other layers. You have to play around with these values and you have to find out what's the best for your filament and for your printer. The next thing you can change, which is also very important, are the print settings. And the first one is the infill. I'm starting with 30%. That's good for most objects. That's strong enough for most objects. You can change also to 40%. If you want the complete 100% info, just to 100% and you get a rigid object. And 
You can choose also how to print the info. I'm using stars. There are different methods depending on the objects you have and where the strength of the object should be. I have no recommendation for you. You have to find out what's the best for you. What's also important is the skirt and the prim. And what it does is it prints a skirt around the object. That's sometimes very important if you need more print bed adhesion. And you can change these values here. And if you have an object which needs support material, you can turn on and off the supports here. That's needed when you have overhangs in your objects, but I don't have these overhangs in my um, wall mounts. You can see it here. There's no overhang. If I turn it upside down, like so, there will be an overhang, but that's not the direction I like to print. So put your objects on the print bed in the direction where you have no overhangs, if possible. And now just put on the slice button. And GD Slicer will slice these uh, objects in different layers. You can see it here. And that's what you need for the 3D print. You need these layers. And GD Slicer gives also a recommendation if something went wrong. And you can find also all the parameters and the infill and the bridges and also your skirts here. So Check out what's a skirt, check out what's an infill, and you get an idea how a slicer works and what it does. Here you can see there are gaps, and that's what the infill does. There's not 100% filament, there are gaps in between, and that is what the infill function does. And the green one is the skirt around these objects for more print bed adhesion if you have problems. Sometimes you have problems when you print ABS or ASA, and that's why I activated the brim. And now you can export the G-code on a USB stick, or you can send it direct to the printer as you like. I'm saving it on a USB, putting it in the printer, and then it's time to print. So you did your first 3D projects and that's cool and now it's time to do the next step and to solve the next bigger problems. And a lot of you know me for my spray gun flips and asked me if I've broken some spray guns during the flips and the answer is no, but guess where I break my spray guns during my normal work when I have to paint bike frames. Sometimes I have to clean the frames with a cloth and then I put the spray guns on the paint stand. And that's exactly the problem because they fell off the paint stand. That's very dangerous. I break off the cups, I break off the needles and nozzles. So I made this little thingy a problem solver and that's a combination of 3D printing and metal. I included also a rivet and a bolt to have this little knob. So let's check out what it can do. Check it out. It's a spray gun clamp for my spray gun stand. And I can put it on, I can tighten the screw. I included also my Martin Gray logo. That's also the next step in creating data if you want creating your own logos. And now I can put on the spray gun and it's safe from falling down. And that solves a huge issue during my painting process. And that's the cool thing about 3D printing. The only thing which can stop you is your imagination. What you can imagine is also what you can create. And it can be a reality within hours and it can solve you huge issues like the issues with my spray gun. And that's what I love about 3D printing. Now you have a rough idea where to start with 3D printing and I can recommend buy a printer which is big enough for your future projects like the X-Max 3 which has a heated chamber and a heated print bed which can handle ABS and ASA for strong prints. And what I can also recommend, start small with little projects I have shown you. Maybe with a pencil case like this one. That's also a cool project for a beginner. And then go bigger and bigger up to a project like my spray gun which is really fun and yeah it takes a while it's a learning curve but i gave you a good hint about the software use fusion that's cool and yeah i hope you have success as well and of course some fun thanks for watching see you in the next one maybe with 3d printing maybe with some cool custom painting jobs and yeah that's it goodbye